Hello there my lovelies. I just thought I would go back to my roots and do a speed paint kind of video and also just talk. In this video I'm going to be doing a commission made by the lovely Celestial X Simmer on Instagram of her characters Celeste and Fabian. For all of my commissions I'm currently using the Dale Rowling hot press watercolour paper. I buy it in either A3 or A4 blocks and cut it down to the size that I need it. All the commissions I've had so far have been A5 so I try my best to cut it as best as I can. The pens that I use to do the outlines are the Unipin Fine Liners. They have water and fade proof pigment ink. And my favourite size I normally use is 01. I normally use these for my comic because they dry pretty quickly, although for commissions I leave the lines a lot longer so they can actually just dry and I don't smudge anything when it comes to the watercolour stage. Now onto the painting process. The brush that you can see me using on screen is the 3 over 0 Raven Jackson's brush. I really love mop brushes, they are great for creating huge washes and they are great for backgrounds. I have many different favourite types of brushes. A lot of them tend to be round sizes 4, 6 and 8. For me personally, the brand doesn't really matter. The paints that I'm using are the St. Petersburg White Knights. These are some of my favourite watercolours. Don't get me wrong, Daniel Smith paints are amazing watercolours, but they're really expensive. And also, they give me this feeling of, I feel like I'm wasting them, I feel like they're too good for me, if that makes sense. Whereas White Knights are in this really nice middle ground where you get a lot for your money, yet they're still professional enough to use for commissions because they're light fast. Throughout college, university, and even up until now, I am an artist known for my use of colour and White Knights really help me with this. The colour of White Knights paints are also super vivid. Overall, just amazing to use, would recommend. I would definitely say the background took a lot of layers to get that opacity in the colour that I wanted. I know I could have used gouache, but I just really wanted to use watercolour because I actually really like working in layers. Although I'm really impatient, I do have a heat tool which allows me to dry the layers in between at a quicker rate. You'll probably see it popping in and out of the frame from time to time because I definitely left it in the footage. While doing the background of this piece, I was using a lot of wet and wet techniques, especially with layering. It was helping create the speckled starry sky. Because the thing that is really captivating about this couple is that they have an affinity for stars, which is so, so cute. I was told by Celestial Eczema that this was their romantic thing. And if you would like to find out more about Celeste and Fabian, I will leave a link to Celestial X Simmer's Sims Instagram. She has this whole story behind those two and it's so, so sweet. It's one of my favourite Sim stories currently and I would highly recommend you check it out if you're interested. I thought I would use some of this commentary to actually talk about art styles, especially for commissions, because in my own personal experience I have a lot of different art styles with a lot of different mediums. I currently use watercolour, gouache and ink and I have so many minute little changes to my style that I do with like each medium. So each medium is a category and each category has like several different styles that I could use. For example, you have watercolour and ink line work. You also have watercolour with pencil crayon line work. And before I'd even chosen watercolour, I had several mediums that I could choose between. I think with some commissions, I might even start using ink. However, I think for the most part, I'm just going to be using watercolour because it's something I can easily fix if I mess up. Whereas ink, once it's down, it's down. You're not changing it. The top thing I wanted about my commission style was consistency. Something that was easy to do, that didn't take too long, but at the same time looked good at the same time. 
So I decided to go with the same sort of style that I use for my comic, Interconnected. Now I know I have not updated my comic in a long time. That's because I've been busy both physically and mentally. <laughs> 2020 has been a very rough year for all of us, but if you already have mental health issues, then you're just in for a bad time all round, really. <laughs> and that's just personally been my experience. I'm currently recording this on the 20th of December, which means that yesterday the Christmas plans were scrapped, which means I can only spend Christmas Day with my family. And for those of you who have been on my channel for a while, you'll know that Christmas Eve is very, very sacred to me. So when I found out in the early hours of this morning, I cried myself to sleep. Now I'm fortunate to be in a tier three area, which means that I still can have a Christmas to some extent. I know that there are people, especially in London and the Southeast, who can't actually do that. If you're in tiers one to three, don't think that your sadness is invalidated by other people in tier four. Your sadness is just as justified because people still had to cancel their plans, whether in tiers one, two, three, or four. If you are in tier four, you have my deepest sympathy. And I'm sorry for any people watching who are not from the UK and don't have a clue what I just said about the tier system. I mean, even most Brits get confused about the tier system, let's be fair. I really hate politics, but let's just say I don't live in the UK. I live in the U-turn because literally every time I blink, the UK takes a U-turn off the edge of a cliff. We don't know where we're going or what we're doing next. As you can imagine, it's doing wonders for my mental health. I'm of course being sarcastic. I just hope we can all make the best of a really crappy situation because this year has just been absolutely terrible. There is definitely no sugarcoating that. Twenty has been terrible and it's really easy to be negative about it, however I think I'm going to think about several positives for this year. So my first positive was at the beginning of the year I started antidepressants. Now antidepressants are not the be all end all, they are not the instant cure and believe me I still get anxiety a lot but I'm a lot more mellow and my emotions are a lot more in check. I'm able to control them a lot more. So I'm so glad I went to my doctor at the start of the year because I don't know how I would have managed this year had I not been on antidepressants. This leads me on to my second success of the year. At the beginning of the year, alongside antidepressants, I also got counselling. This started at the beginning of February and ended in mid-October. So I got it throughout the pandemic. Yes, the in-person sessions were a lot more helpful, but knowing that I had that support during the first lockdown meant a lot to me. This also leads me on to my third thing, and all of these things kind of connect together because at the end of my counselling sessions, I needed a distraction. I needed something to keep my mind busy, and I thought it would be the best time to start up my online shop, which I finally did. For those who have been on my channel for a while, you'll know that since about 2016, 2017, I've been talking about selling my original artwork or the possibility of doing commissions and it hasn't come about until this year. So I'm very happy about that. At the moment, it's just watercolor commissions up on my Etsy. However, I have been asked about digital commissions. So as soon as I feel ready to put up digital commissions, I will. At the moment, I'm still feeling a little bit rusty with my digital art. So I need to get back into the swing of things. I first came across Celestial X Simmer over on my Sims Instagram. Yes, I have a Sims Instagram. I love documenting my characters. I play out the same characters' lives that I draw in my artwork, so there is a consistent through line there. But I take the Sims side of things more as a hobby, which is great because when art is your career and also your hobby, it can sometimes blend together too much. 
So having it be a little bit more distinct with a Sims side of things just makes me feel a little bit more relaxed. And it's great because The Sims can actually allow me to explore new avenues of storylines that I haven't already planned out in my artwork. It allows me to play out non-canon elements in my story while finding new and interesting ways to develop the current canon story. To give you a little bit of a glimpse of The Sims side, basically in my artwork I didn't really develop the Dune Royal family all that well currently. They are just known in my art side of things as the Desert Kingdom, whereas in my Sims character universe, they're being fully explored, there are multiple generations of them, and they are full of drama. I love them to bits. At the beginning of the pandemic, I only had 200 hours in The Sims, and bearing in mind, that was from 2017 up until 2020. I now have 1,750 something. I think I have lost my mind. As for the YouTube side of things, I haven't really been paying attention to my analytics all that much. And to be honest, nothing really has changed. My channel is still as stagnant as it was at the beginning of the pandemic. I have, however, turned my second channel into a Sims channel where I just explore the Sims side of my character universe. It's a lot of fun to edit and I really do have fun exploring the different story elements that I can weave together with the Sims. And don't get me started on custom content, I think I'm obsessed. Yes, I paid for a subscription to the Sims resource, I haven't got a problem, nobody help me. <laughs> I guess this commentary took quite the tangent and I do apologise about that, but I hope you had fun listening to me ramble for a bit, I've got some things off my chest, and managed to do a piece of artwork. So if you like these kind of videos and want to see more of these, I'd recommend subscribing with post notifications on for notifications for every time I upload. My upload schedule is pretty erratic to non-existent at this point, so if you could subscribe with post notifications on, you'll know when I upload or when YouTube decides to let you know when I upload. But I will see you in my next video. Bye my lovelies.